Man, I'm, I'm losing folks. And I'm still not gonna go ahead. I'm still not gonna Christian realist. I am the one who believes that the Bible has got to be true. Yeah. I am the one that believes that when we do, do things wrongly, somebody needs to address it. Yeah. And not condemn anybody, but just bring clarity to the fact that this is not the will of God. What we're seeing today in the Christian world is really very little Christianity. Hallelujah. It's really very little Christianity because you don't see the humility that goes along with it. You don't see the love that is unconditional that goes along with it. You see people judging folk based on their denominations. You see people acting like they want to be superstars. You see people living like they like money is the key to our salvation. You see, you see uh, prophets and prophetesses coming in just to get money. And you don't realize that you don't realize that the prophet was never called to the local body. The prophet was never called to come and run a revival. The prophet was never called to stand in the pulpit and to preach to the people. The prophet was called to the nations, to speak to kings, to speak to leaders, to speak to I don't hear anybody. If you read in the Bible, the prophets spoke to the leaders. I don't hear nobody. The prophets spoke to the leaders. The prophets never came to the to the tabernacle and to the synagogues and ran revivals and talked about if I am a prophet of God and that I am. Put a hundred dollars in my hand and the Lord will bless you. But we believe this stuff because this has been done so often. And we and we're gra we gravitate to the popular. We gravitate to the popular. And it's become quite sad. Yeah. It's become quite discouraging. Mm -hmm. And not just, it's not just discouraging to me, but it's discouraging to the people who are in sin. Because the sinners know what saved people are supposed to be like. You don't believe me? You don't believe me? Go and cuss in front of one of your unsaved friends. They will look at you and say, I thought you were supposed to be so saved. Now they may curse all day long, but if they hear you in the same vernacular, they hold you to a higher regard because you claim that you know Christ. Has that ever happened to anybody here? They, because you claim you know Christ. So if they see you doing something untoward, if they see you coming out of a hotel with somebody you're not married to, they would look at you and say, I thought you were supposed to be so saved. Because it's disappointing they want you to be who you are even if they're not who they're supposed to be. Amen. The world knows. The world knows what Christianity is supposed to be. And the world becomes despondent when Christians are not like they claim. Amen. When Christianity becomes something more than, than honest and integral, the world becomes hurt. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 And, and that's that's all our, that's all a part of our plight. And it's also a part of our fault. Because we have played with this thing for so long that it hasn't become real to them because it's not real to us anymore. We become religious people who will come and praise God as long as the music is going. But if you say something wrong to me in church, I will get you told so fast and still praise God right after it because we have lost the image of Christ. We have lost the image of Christ. If the pastor gets up and preaches something that, that depicts our sin, who does he think he is? I ain't coming back here no more because we have lost the image of Christ. We've lost the image of Christ. Where is the humility? Where, where, where is the contrition that breaks our hearts and has us running to the altar and crying out to God, Oh God, have mercy on me. According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Where is the beating of our chest and the crying out to God? It's our fault. 
we, we, we fail to know the scriptures. We know the songs, but we don't know the scriptures. We, 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 we can sit in a choir rehearsal and learn four songs. All of the verses, all of the harmonies, follow the director, follow the, uh, organ, the organ, the piano, the bass, the drums. We can learn it all in just a few hours. But can't get the scriptures right. And don't know them book, chapter, and verse. Well, Jesus wept. You don't even know where that's from. <laughs> How is it that we are so excellent at things that don't matter? Come on. And are so remiss at the things that qualify us with God. Hmm. Why don't we say something? Hmm. Why, why don't we say something? Well, tonight, just give me about 20 more minutes and I will say something. If you win in your Bible, I was, I was about to preach something totally different, Pastor. I was about to preach something totally different. If you have your Bibles with you, and if you're turning your Bibles on the screen, help me, Lord, with this, to the book of Romans. If you go to the book of Romans, the 13th chapter, the whole book of Romans is a book that really indicts false worship. The whole book of Romans is the, is the, is the, is the thing that upsets the religious apple cart. The whole book of Romans. If you go to the book of Romans, the 13th chapter, and go to the 11th verse. Hallelujah. And the 11th verse simply says this. And that knowing the time, it is now high time. To awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Yes, now, sir. This, understand this. This is Paul writing a letter to the Roman church. This is not to sinners. This is to people who say they have Jesus. Yes. Amen. If you started at the first chapter of Romans and read from the first to the second and third, you would be totally shaken at the things that Paul addressed to the Roman church. Amen. Because the Roman church had three principles that perverted it. It adapted and, and, and gravitated back to some age-old principles and it became a part of the new church. That's why Paul has to write this letter. Because in Rome, there were three points that they lived by. Politics, power, and perversion. That was the Roman church. Politics, power, and perversion. That was the way of Rome, secular, and it became the way of Rome, Christian, once this new Christianity took place. So this whole book is Paul writing a letter to the Roman new church. Amen. Man, I'm, I'm talking I got a room. Donnie, you're not home. Let's just make this short and sweet. Donnie, you're not home. And, 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 and as you read, he addressed people who once had it right in the first chapter, who once had it right, but let go of the right and called the right wrong. And didn't want to keep the word of God that they received, but threw it away so that they could go back to old principles. And in the first verse of the second chapter, it says, you are without excuse. Yes. Because you know Jesus. But in order to sin, you've got to throw away what you know about Jesus. Or change the nature of Jesus to corroborate with your sin. Amen. The whole book of Romans deals with setting things straight. So in the 13th chapter, he's saying that you got to realize what time it is. Yes. And if you know the time and know how desperate the time is and know how wicked the day is and know how absolutely dark it is, it is high time for you to stop playing church to awake out of your sleep. This is, a, this is an admonition to the church. I don't hear you. This is an admonition to the church to wake up out of your sleep. Because now is the coming of Jesus Christ closer than when you first believed. 
the second, the, 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 the twelfth verse says, the night is far spent. Mm -hmm. yes. Meaning you've wasted too much time as it is. The night is far spent and now the day is at hand. Are y'all reading that? And now the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. The works of darkness, who's he talking to? The church. He's saying that the church has works of darkness. Yes. You represent yourself to be the body. We represent ourselves to be the body of Christ. But we overlook the darkness, the sin, the wickedness that is in the church. The night is for spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on. I don't hear it. Let us put on. The armor of of light, of light, of light, of light, of light, of light. He is the father of light, and we are the children of the light. And we cannot continue to walk in darkness and think that we can still claim to be his. The Bible says, in him there is no darkness at all. Hallelujah. In Christ there is no darkness. My God and Savior. I'm about to break my lung. Go ahead. I feel it coming. In him there is no darkness. So then where do we get the works of darkness? From the prince of darkness. And we wear those garments, those dark garments, in a sanctified and holy place. And still say that we are his children. He said, you've got to take off the works of darkness if you're the church, and you've got to put on the armor of light. Hallelujah. Verse 14, what does it say? Verse 14 says, come on, turn to it. But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the Lord. Go to verse 13. Go to 13. come out Hallelujah. Let us walk honestly. He's telling the church that you're not honest. Yes. That you, excuse my language, you're faking the funk. You're putting on airs like you know God, but you're really not living like it. He says, let's stop telling the lie. Let's walk in honesty as in the daytime. In the daytime. Ain't no cussing saints. Ain't no drinking saints. Amen. Ain't no fornicating saints. Ain't no lying saints. Not even to take off from work. Ain't no lying saints. Say you sick when you ain't sick. I'm not home because I don't want to deal with the bill to let so tell your children to lie. Tell them I'm not home. <laughs> Amen. It's the, the, the Bible put it like this. The Bible said, it's the little foxes little. that destroy the whole vine. It's not the big thing, it's those little things that mess us up. He said, let us walk honestly as in the daytime. <coughs> not in rioting. Let's stop in rioting. Not in aggression well, and telling people off yeah. and getting things told and fixed. Yes. Not in rioting with, with a harsh demeanor. Yeah. Not in rioting which denotes a riot or denotes somebody rebelling. Not in rioting. We don't handle things like this. I just had a prayer and praise, a prayer, prayer and peace vigil at our church on, on, on Tuesday night for the Eric Gardner and the Michael Brown. And I, I had this specifically so I can de uh, so, so I can deflate yeah. the anger yeah. and we had police chief come because everybody's against the police now because of the few bad apples that make it that make it look like the whole of the police of New York or, 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 or America are messed up and I, and, I, and I had to preach to them and tell them that we we're gonna cry out for justice but we're also going to cry out for mercy Amen. Justice for the ones who were killed. Amen. Mercy for the ones who killed them. Amen. Amen. See, don't let your politics and your power and perversion blind you to who 
God's called us to be. I told him when Jesus was nailed and they took one nail and drove it through his hand, he didn't curse.